What's up, y'all? This is Ty. Today is what? To be Tuesday. That's right. Come on, To Be Tuesday. Woo! To Be Tuesday. That is when I review a To Be movie. And y'all know them To Be movies be outrageous. Even their titles, they be like Secure the Bag 1 and 2, Ends Ain't Ish, Bees Ain't Ish. Still crazy titles like that. Hood this part one and two. Ray Ray just got out of jail. It's always some kind of plot. Some drug dealer just got out of jail. He's trying to redeem himself. Or it's something where best friends and somebody sleeping with their best friend, man, and vice versa. And they all kill each other. They always have these crazy plots. Which is why I enjoy the 2B movies. I know they're not the best acting. It's not the best acting. Sometimes it's not the best writing. Some of them don't even act. Some of them, I'll be like, damn, can you pretend that you're not reading off a paper? Some of them, the acting be so bad that I'm like, damn, you, you just didn't even try. They just turned, the, they just said roll and you just went, oh, oh, it was some. I can't remember which one this was I watched. And they were like, oh my goodness, how could you do that? I'm like, can you put some life into your acting? But with that being said, that was just one. I love these 2B movies and sh I shout out to these independent directors and producers and writers and these actors up and coming that are doing their thing and getting their artwork out, getting their work out there. It's art. They're getting it out there. So I respect that. And you might one day see me on 2B, right? Listen, you got to start somewhere, right? So shout outs to the 2B movies. Um, today's movie that we're reviewing is called You're Not Alone. But before I get into that, let me give a shout out to my subscribers, Lamont Simpson. He's the one who said, Ty, you need to call this Ty's To Be Tuesday. Well, we here we are. I think this is our fourth movie we are reviewing on To Be Tuesday. So Lamont Simpson, Simply Be Yourself 100, Capricorn Man 89, LaWanda Brown, Tanae C, Randall Brown, who loves To Be Movies too. And he's the one who told me, he said, Ty, listen, Erica Mina from Love and Hip Hop is the queen of Tubi. I don't care what you say. And he might be right because Homegirl is in this movie. Um, then we have Peyton Davis, Quiet Guy, Sheila D, Karima Khadija, Simply Be Yourself. Oh, well, I already said Simply Be Yourself 100. June BLC, Penny Atif, um, Savannah Rivers or more, and all the rest of you wonderful people. Thank you. Please like, comment, subscribe, share. Let's keep this channel going and growing, right? So with that being said, let's get down to this movie. This movie is called You're Not Alone. It opens with a scene that I feel like I've seen before because I have, because the scene was very screamish. If you've seen the move, the scream movies, it was pretty much that same thing, but on a lower scale. Now, this movie, You're Not Alone, was directed by the same director who directed Stepfather, Stepmother 1, 2, and 3, Chris Stokes. Now, y'all know Chris Stokes. He was the manager at one point of B2K and I think and Mature, and I think he's the cousin of Marquise Houston. Marquise Houston is, um, was in, in Mature, and he's an actor. We've seen him on Sister, Sister, and he was in Stepmother 1, 2, and 3, and... He's one of the executive producers of this, along with Keith Sweat, because Keith Sweat is in this movie, too. And so is Keith Sweat's son, Justin Sweat. And the star of this show, of this movie, though, is Michael Jai White and a new actress by who we know from, what's he from? Why Did I Get Married? One and two. And um, Black Dynamite, I think. Yeah. And we have a new actress, Precious Way. Um, she's new. She's playing his daughter. And of course, Erica Mina is in this. So that's the cast. But no, it kicks off, right? Just like Scream. This pretty girl is on the phone and they're doing this kind of their version of that, basically. And she's he's like, oh, who am I talking to? Blah, 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 blah. He comes in the house. She tries to, first of all, he gives her stupid instructions. And she was dumb for following them. He didn't say, let's play a game. What's your favorite scary movie? He said something like, do me a favor. Why don't you come to, after she realized somebody was watching her, he said, why don't you um, come to the front door? Well, come outside. Why am I coming outside? No, 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 no. So this dumb girl goes outside and he's like, oh, so you didn't lock the door fast enough. So he somehow, he got in. She's running, trying to get away from him. And unlike the killer in Scream, this one beats you to death. So he didn't have no knife, but he was brutally punching this young lady. So he kills her. So we know there's a killer in town and this killer targets young girls. And see, they started off, they said that the killer likes to copy horror movies 
popular horror movie. So this killer clearly likes to copy Scream and make phone calls on these young ladies. You know, he gets them and he um, calls them and then he goes to their house and beats them to death. And so we learn all that when we see the detectives and one of the detectives is played by Keith Sweat. Nobody. That Keith Sweat. Yes, the Keith Sweat. You know, something, something just ain't right. He has a small role here, but he's here playing a cop. And that's how we learn. They're trying to figure out how to track this killer and stop this killer because he's done so much. Then they show us Michael Jai White, who's playing Keith Mitchell and his daughter, Alexis Mitchell. Now, Alexis Mitchell is his daughter. There, his his wife was tragically killed. She was killed by a serial killer. Right away, we already know it's probably the same one, this fake scream killer who normally kills teenage girls, but somehow he has killed this woman. That's, I already jumped to that conclusion. I already figured that part out. So he's overprotective of his daughter and he gets her in all these self-defense classes and things like that. And he has all this security in the house because he feels guilty for his um, wife being killed because she wasn't able to protect herself. And we learned that his daughter is under house arrest because she jacked somebody up because they said something ill about her mother. And, you know, you don't talk about people's mama. So she jacked the person. Up. She must have jacked them up really bad that now she's under house arrest. So her father's overprotective. She has a she has a few friends. She has a good friend and she has a boyfriend who's played by Justin Sweat. That's Keith Sweat's son. And, you know, we get to know these characters. Meanwhile, Keith. Mitchell, he has a flight. He has to go out of town. But like I said, he got the house secured up. He has to go out of town. He's on the plane. Now, while he's on the plane, he's, you know, monitoring the house. And he got good reception up there because my phone, I can't call nobody. Once we get once we get off, take off, I can't call nobody. And then most of the time, they tell you, turn your phone off or put your phone on airplane mode mode but they never told him put his phone on airplane mode apparently so he's up there so i'm like oh this is a good premise so the premise was he's witnessing a home invasion of his own home with his daughters under house arrest on his phone while he is in in the airplane there's nothing he could do he's what 30 feet in the air or whatever there's nothing he can do he's up you know there's nothing he could do so I was like, that's a good plot. So I'm thinking, okay, what they're going to do is have him show it. I'm like, is he going to direct her how to get around the house and all that through this? And I'm like, that's an interesting plot. I thought it was going to be some tension there. Really wasn't too much tension. But he does meet the flight attendant, played by who? Erica Mina. So Randall Brown was right. And Erica Mina is there. And she is trying to calm him down because he starts panicking. Because as soon as he sees that, he tries to call his daughter. Bloop! Phone goes off phone dead he ain't got no charger you can't use the back of the, i was like you can't use the the charge isn't there a charger usually at the back of the the your seat in the air what what airplane is what what airline is this so he gets up in a panic she's telling him calm and he's like miss somebody's invading the home and i need you to help blah 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 yada 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 don't yak yak don't talk back she's like sir you need to calm down and i'm like this man is telling you that there's some danger and you tell him to calm down then Finally, he gets the phone back on and then he's like, oh, I made a mistake. This is actually my daughter's boyfriend. That was now that's where I was a little confused because there is a scene where he does the and y'all can correct me if y'all saw this. There was a scene where he knew the boyfriend was there already. There was a whole conversation where they had a conversation and he saw the boyfriend in the house or maybe the boyfriend snuck back later. I don't know. But anyway, he realized, oh, my daughter's not in danger. That's her boyfriend right there. But then later on, he he sees she sends him a text, a selfie, and he zooms in on the selfie and he sees the fake um, scream killer, the fake. Uh, what do you call uh, what, they used, what is the killer on Ghostface? The fake Ghostface in the background. He's like, oh my God. So he alerts Erica Mina's character again. Like, oh, it's not a false alarm. My daughter is actually in danger. So then they call the police on the, the airline phone and go and they got to go, you know, they got to figure out what town he's in, give the address. Meanwhile, the fake Ghostface killer is, has killed one of the other young ladies. And we see how he does that. He, like I said, he just uses his brute force to kill these young ladies. Um, this one, I don't know. This one, I was entertained, 
but I wasn't on the edge of my seat with this one. Um, parts of it made me laugh because I was like, some of this is so straight out of Scream. But I was still entertained for some reason. I was still entertained. Um, just some of the stuff that happens, though, like some of the choices... You know, the, the way the girls are, you got all this, but you know, that's true in horror movies, though. You got all this space to run this way. No, let me run this way and let me put myself in the corner and be trapped by the killer. Let me make it easy for him. But I will say Alexis didn't make it easy for the killer. And she, she she's fighting him off. But then a police officer comes, right? Now, this police officer comes. I'm telling y'all the whole movie. I know. This police officer comes and the killer kills him. So now it's just her and him. And he gets in the house and she gives him a good run for her money. And I did like the scenes where she's talking with her father. And her father's like um, telling her what to do. Go there, do this. And remember, she has an ankle bracelet on, ankle monitor. So she can get out of the house to set that alarm off further enough. The police will automatically come to the house. So she runs out and there's a scene where she's running out and the fake killer the fake scream killer, that's what I'm calling him. He grabs her, pulls her back in. That was funny, but she was giving him a run for his money. But I think the conflict was, there was not enough. You know, I like the wham, bam, bam. There was not enough of that for me in this. It was all right, though. it was all right. So after he does that, <laughs> she goes back in the house. She gets the cop's gun and pop, 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 she kills the killer. And then the twist, look, I'm telling y'all the whole thing. So this is a... This is not a spoiler free review, but the twist in this one was that he is the same one who killed her mother. And apparently he killed the mother not on purpose. He was looking for a teenage girl. Turns out her mother was house sitting and that teenage girl that he was communicating with did ended up going to a party. So then he attacked and killed the mother. But that's not who he wanted. But now the detective decides to call in Alexis. This is, they do this in the flashback. They decide to call in Alexis. And when they call in Alexis, Alexis alerts them. And he tells Alexis that he may have a lead on who might have killed her mother. And then he gets a phone call. So Alexis gets up and takes a picture. So all along, Alexis set this killer up. She planted this where he could come meet at her house so that she could get revenge and kill him. That's the plot. That was the twist in there i was like uh, okay i guess i guess we could do we could deal with that this one was i laughed at some of it so i, I was entertained i enjoyed that if you've seen this one tell me what did you think about it and i'm sorry i had to spoil it for you that twist but this one you probably would have figured the twist out yourself because i kind of figured it out on my own but with that being said i'm <laughs> I feel like they could have. This could have went so so many other places. They could have did so many other things. I think they should have did more on the plane with him on the plane, communicating. That would have been dope if he just would have helped his daughter out more. If they would have made that the plot, like and put more tension in that, that would have been really cool. But they didn't really do it like that. But you know, it was it was it was all right. I did. They did have him. It looks like he might have a love interest. Maybe there'll be a sequel. I don't know why there'll be a sequel though. But you saw Erica Mina's character flirting with the father, so I don't know. But then at the end, they asked the young lady. One of the cops says, "Oh, are you sure this was self defense?" And she's like, "Wait a minute. This serial killer who killed my mom and then came after me, and I took a gun from the police officer that he killed. You think that this ain't self defense?" And then they left it like that. And then that's how it ended. So, you know, this one was, it was okay. It was all right. I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it like I did the last movie that I reviewed, the last Tubi movie. But that's all I have for now. Thank you for watching. Tell me your thoughts down below if you've seen this one. This one is called You're Not Alone. And I will see you all. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you all in the next video.